Let the music play a little bit. Mm. We're at a jazzy nightclub right now. Have to sit down, open up our sours, sour beers. So do we call them sours? Do people automatically know what you're talking about when we say sours? I'd like to get our vocab down. Give me the yeah, show. yeah, we can go into that because there's various styles within the sour. Think of sour as an umbrella. Okay, sour as an umbrella. All right, terrific. This will be the first time I try a sour, as always, on the... This is Rant 103 Sours. That's what I'm calling it, sours. Or, uh, you know, the hashtag Beer Me 3. The old Beer Me 3 show. You remember that show that everyone mm. talked about and raved about. You know, the old ratings and stuff like that. <laughs> I have something from Prairie Ale Arte Artisanals. This is Brett C. This, look at this cover, man. That's like some legit artwork there. Yeah, Prairie always has a really weird label. Yeah, this reminds me of um, Adventure Time. Oh, that, like <laughs> description. I like Adventure Time. And um, when I went to Liquid Town, what they call it, pull up my rating up here. What's my rating for this bad boy? It is a 91 on Beer Advocate. Not bad. Saison, Farm Ale. But what makes a, correct me if I'm wrong, what makes a sour beer sour is that it's conditioned with retinomycin. Mm, but close. Close? Yeah. Just okay. wi uh, wild yeast and bacteria. So you have the typical brewing, like Saccharomyces yeast. That's the typical brewer's yeast. So this is these beers are used... Are, okay, blah. These beers are brewed where they either on top of or in, instead of Saccharomyces, they use a combination of Lactobacillus, Britannomyces, and Pediococcus. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't get that full explanation at, at my uh, local liquid town. I think he. But yeah, it's Britannomyces. Get the hell out of here. Mm -hmm. like, and oh. I, we've talked about Britannomyces before because that's the one where you know uh, the the descriptor for it is horse blanket. It's it's very funky, very barny, very wild. Lactobacillus gives you more of that tart, sour. Like I was. Do you guys remember Sour Patch Kids? Yeah. That's what Lactobacillus yeah. is. It's just like that tart, puckering. It's very low pH. And Pediococcus, I'm not as familiar with. I know some breweries use it, but not right um, there. I'm more familiar with Lacto and Brett. I got some like stale bread smell. Is it? That's what I'm smelling right now. Yeah. Well, you're, you, yours is a Brett one, so you're. It's just going to be a lot of funk to it. Um, cheese, like a funky cheese kind of a smell. Barnyard is the best one though, when you think about it. Hell yellow. I just opened this beer right now. Um, uh, a lot of foam at the pads. A lot of foam at the top. Big head right there. See that? I'm about to taste it. I've never had effervescent. It. Effervescent. I like that description. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very eff oh. Yeah, this uh, yeah, it tastes like stinky bread too. Does this okay. get better? Well, sure it, depends, it depends if you like that or not. So again, so what I said was with the different strains of uh, microorganisms that they add, you get very different. Beers. So the one you have is a 100% Brett, right? It, there's just no lacto. I think it says it's got Brett. It's, yeah, Brettanomyces clausini. It's just that. And then it even says Brett C, which mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm getting really big into graphic design right now, and I'm digging how this label was laid out. Cause it, how yeah. they laid it. So, just, okay, so since that was just Brett, that means you're just getting all that funk, so stinky cheese, barnyard, all that. Yeah. Now, if you, on the other side, did 100% lactobacillus, you would get something very similar to what Cascade Brewing up in Portland, Oregon does. They okay. use 100% lacto, and their stuff is, it's puckeringly, puckeringly sour. I mean, if you drink too much of it, too, I mean, those kinds of sours, you you know, with a low pH, it will tear your guts up within reason. Like, you're not going to have the best bathroom day the next day. <laughs> it's that bad. Now, then, the option, too, then, is to blend them as well with pediococcus and do maybe some lacto, some bread, you, you mix them, and you can get very well-balanced beers. Um, yes. Love Child is a beer that comes out every year, and that's really good. Love it. Um, yeah, definitely stinky. Uh, let me read the description on my bottle first before we go. Uh, a, farm else brewed, a farmhouse ale brewed with Cascade and Citra Hops and a touch of sea salt, just a touch. Oh, it's just a touch. Um, Teresa, you're also drinking a Prairie Ale. Is yours mm -hmm. also a farmhouse? 
Okay, you know, no, this is, um, a the description says a sour bottle conditioned golden ale. Um, is a prairie gold is a dry, highly effervescent saison. Si is that how you say it? Saison. Saison. Fermented with a mix of ale yeast, wine yeast, lactobacillus, and two strains of Breton. Bretonomyces. Yeah, Bretonomyces. You got the lacto uh, lactobacillus and the Bretonomyces. Mm -hmm. The mix of the wine ale and ale yeast. How is yours tasting? Still it's bread? Good. It's really, uh, <clears throat> it's really fruity, um, like almost champagne-like with a little bit of sour. I like it. I did not think I was gonna like sours, and I truly yeah. took this one because it was the only one at the grocery store, and I got it today. Yeah, so and, and, but and it's because it's that blend. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not the funk, I can tends to turn people off. But when you start blending with the lacto and you get like a nice tart, almost citrusy grapefruity beer, it yeah. helps a lot. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely yeah. funk will be. Uh, bring the funk. It smells funky too. Like this, this is probably not one of my favorite beers right now. But I'm still gonna. Yeah. Uh, they're, very they're, they're very different. They're very decisive. <laughs> I opened the bottle um, in the kitchen, thank God, and I like it just overflowed. Like the all uh -huh. all the bubbles came out. Like That's I lost half the beer because I was like, what is going on? That explains that um, why it, it shot out like that because it's very effervescent. Um, yeah. Well, it, and the reason why too is like so. A lot of times with beer, you you brew it, you know, it's you make it carb carbonated, it's conditioned, you bottle it, you're done. But with these, I mean, the Brett and some of the other things are still living in that bottle, so they're still kind of fermenting. So they make kind of uh, bottle condition. Does it make that more bubbly? Yeah, because they're in there the whole time mm -hmm. doing it. So you could potentially have very overactive ones if it was temp abuse or if it was there for a while. And you'll get the gushers. I mean, that's th these styles tend to have that happen sometimes. Is the yeah. gusher I was, like not prepared? And I, was like, I need it. I need a glass. I need it. <laughs> not not my best day. <laughs> but it's I, good. I was just wondering if the gusher indicated the climax of bacteria love. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the sweet facial of beer. Nice. Okay, Jamie, you <laughs> are drinking <laughs> Rodenbach Grand Cru from. Rorari Rodenbach, I can't say that. <laughs> Rorari Roje. Uh, you got a 95, man. I think, oh, what was, Teresa, what was your rating? A 90. I'm um, on so, 90, yeah. 90, I had a 91. Jamie, you got a 95, man. The bros give it a 100. What, uh, how did you acquire this beer? Got it from a buddy of mine from work. They brought it in from uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Um... It's pretty good. It's completely different color from what the three you guys are drinking. It's a lot darker. Um, definitely is kind of champagne-y, but it doesn't... I don't have any kind of fruit taste or anything like that, though. Do you know your uh, bacteria makeup? I can't. I don't find it on here. I can go to the website, maybe. No, I didn't see anything. And then I tried signing in to Beer Advocate on my phone, but it keeps telling me that... I have the incorrect password. Oh wow, this website <laughs> is in a different language, so I can't even speak English good. So I don't know. Yeah, it's very true. You and, can't. Brewed <laughs> and uh, bottled in, in Belgium, and it's imported. <laughs> it's true. You can't. <laughs> oh, okay, well it looks good. Um, does it? Do you have a stale bread to uh, smell? <clears throat> no. No. Nope. No weird smell, no smell like no cheese smell or anything like that. It's, but it's definitely a sour. Yeah, yeah. Well, you might just have what what um this guy was talking about. I don't know if I pulled yours up, Rick. Rick. We did not. We haven't talked about mine yet, really. Oh, I pulled yours up right now. Yeah, Saint Breda. It's like Breda. I want to go Pretenomyces. Is that why Saint Breda's coming into your, the name here? Uh huh. You can bet so. Ooh, it's Clement, and it's the Clementine version. So it's a Britannomyces citrus wild beer with citrus uh, with uh, just clementine. So it definitely has the funk from the Brett, but the clementine gives it a nice little citrus tart too. So it's it's almost like it has lacto in it. I don't know if they add it. I'm pretty sure they would have listed it if they did. Um, so yeah, no, it's just a nice refreshing beer. Crooked Stave can do no wrong. They're definitely a really good brewery when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I'm so, feeling these, especially not this one. Well, you need to maybe try one that's more lambic based, um, but also too. So there's various styles. So there's um, the American wild ale. Uh, basically, it just utilizes American yeast and bacteria strains, 
just, you know, it's kind of like a catch-all. It's really just the stuff being made here. You have Berliner Weiss, which is, you know, a pretty light beer, heavy on the lactobacillus, um, but not too, too sour. It's just professionally tart. One you would like, though, is potentially the Flanders Red Ale. Um, they're usually they're aged in uh, oak barrels to age and mature, and they're usually a lot more tart. Um, Gozas, which I've talked about in the past, are more of a, they use coriander and salt, so it's kind of like a salty sour beer. It's uh, with lactic acid bacteria. No, that one would taste. Um, it's interesting. Uh, Lambics are pretty good. They're the classic beer. They spontaneously fermented beer, you know, from the certain region of uh, Belgium and Brussels. Uh, it then, honestly, a lot of times you, they blend several years versus um, several years worth of them together to make things like gooses, which are one, two, and three year old beers. And then if they do uh, ferment it further with fruit, you know, you can get like a creek or a frambois. Uh, they're really, really good. Um, not too sour, just tart enough. And then you have um, Oud Bruins as well. Again, something similar to a Flanders Red, a little bit darker, not aged on wood. And that's, again, would definitely have some more sour aspect to it. So it's, you know, if you don't like the funk, just go for, for sour. I bring the funk. Just, uh, I'm feeling the spirit here, man. But it is good, and it's 8.1%, man. And Perio, I mean, this was 10 bucks. It was like nine something, nine whatever. So I mean, it's not cheap. But... No, Prairie is not known for being cheap. <laughs> so I'm so glad I spilled half that beer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 Teresa's evening has not been going accordingly, and uh, not just the uh, spilling of the beer probably put the exclamation mark on that. Uh, so what's up, guys? We just talked about our beers. I feel like we ran through a lot right there, but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was like a condensed PowerPoint slide of sours. Yeah, that, was, that was amazing. Uh, we talked a lot about. Um, okay, so this is the first time I drink sours. Obviously, Rick, you've had them before. Um, any favorites that stand out? Just like you um, just name them I would out. say um, uh, which hold on, blanket. Okay, anything from Cascade out in Portland, Oregon. They're all lacto bombs, so they're super sour. And it used to be that you could get them delivered to you. Yeah, like that's what we jokingly called them lacto bombs because they're just 100% lactobacillus. They're super, super sour, but they're good. I like them. Words like that. Yeah, it's a lacto bomb, man. I want to be like <laughs> cultured as you, man. All yeah, right. And then um, crook everything from Crooked Stave too. My buddy Tom up in New Jersey brought two cases of it back from Denver, and he held on to it for almost a year just for my bachelor party, and. Uh, Actually, no, he held him, yeah, it was a solid year. And he brought one to drink at the bachelor party, one whole case, and then one is a gift for me. So it's nice having like a whole whole case of sours just sitting there ready to go. But those, those two places especially are. Uh, would you age uh, a sour beer? Yes. So the whole point is the Britannomyces stays in the bottle and changes over time. So as the yeast will, you know, scavenge different things from there, eat different things, and therefore produce different flavors. So sours are, you know, specifically, okay, so when I was talking about that list of sour beers, uh, I mentioned Lambics. So Lambics and then the blend of it, which is called Goose, those two styles are considered the ones you can age the longest. We're talking like, I'm, I thought it was at least a decade, if not like up to 30 years. Can you imagine that? Like 30 years from now, I'll be 60. I'll be like, it's time. Yeah. This set in motion when I was doing a podcast. <laughs> oh, trust me, I, I have a um, I bought a goose or I bought some, some lambic from a decent brewery. Um, threw it in my closet and I, I literally did it like two years ago and I plan on doing that. Like I want to wait like twenty years on that. Damn. To be like I am turning fifty today and pour that beer. Is that how you say that? Beer name Goose. I, my friend calls him Goes. I guess it's the same well, thing. No, there's, two, there's two different ones. So one type of sour is a Goza, G O S E. It's, okay, that's what like, I was It looks like Ghost, but it's Goza. That's yeah. the salty coriander one. And then there's Goose, which is G U E U Z E. Okay, I have not seen that one. Um, no, they're not very common. They're, they're most of the good ones are all basically imported. Uh, Cantione is the the go-to. Brewery for it, um, amazing beers, and then three—it's called like Three Fontaine or something like that. I'm, I'm horribly mispronouncing it—is another one. Then there's a few others, and I mean, when you go over to Belgium and stuff, lambics and gooses are 
what you want to get. And, and they could probably could pull out bottles that are 50 years old there, at least, if not older, because they could, because the breweries in, over there have been doing this forever. Dang, dude. You're dropping I'm, some knowledge on me right now. Well, I, I really dig sours. sours. Yeah, I didn't realize how much you liked them, Rick. So, uh, oh, yeah. This is going to be part one of sours, apparently. Because I need to go back and try some other ones. Man. I need lacto bombs. See what I did there? Mm-hmm. Oh, boom, you dropped it, dude. Boom. Um, I pulled up this thing from Box Brew Kits, and um, it says, uh, four things you need to know about face puckering sour beers. It has, like, these three, four different facts here. But uh, number two, it says the three main microbes. And, of course, we already said Pretenomyces, and I heard you mention Lactobacillus, but I didn't hear Pediococcus. You might have said that. I mentioned it a few times, but I didn't focus on it because I don't know that flavor very well. It says, like lacto, pedio is a bacteria that creates lactic acid and tastes oh, okay. sourness as a result of a lowering pH level. Some people think pedio creates a much more intense sour sourness than lacto. Um, while lacto produces a clean sour sourness, pedio can contribute other funky aromas and flavors to the mix, and it gives Brett more feel to work with, so they're often used together. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that, mutualism? No, because I don't think... Symbiotic. Commensalism, right? Cause only no, commensalism, one... commensalism is plus zero, so one benefits and the other has no positive or negative. Yeah, so that would be... Because it seems like Pediococcus benefits Bertinomyces, but Bertinomyces doesn't necessarily benefit Pediococcus. Okay, so I went... So there's a brewery in Green Bench, or called Green Bench, they're in St. Pete, and I went to a... Uh, Jack Spear Week, I mentioned to you, I did a seminar that I, or he, I went to one he hosted, and it was all about sours, funky beers, uh, different types of conditioning, like do you add the bacteria first and then put it on wood, or do you put it wood, then bacteria, or at the same time? And based on what you want, you can get different things. And the same is with, yeah, Pediococcus and Brett and Lacto in that, you know, one bacteria might start producing some kind of chemical at a certain phase, and that would be when you want to maybe pitch Pediococcus because they can eat that chemical and do something different, you know? So they definitely all feed into each other. That's cool. Yeah, it, there's, it is such a science to it, and I learned a lot in the seminar, but it was just this, you know, you got to know what you're doing. So... As a, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Teresa. Oh, the... Uh, this is a rumor I heard, and I was probably drinking when I heard it, so don't hold me to it, but there's a brewery out here in Austin called Jester King. Oh, I've never heard. They are amazing. Yeah. So the rumor I've heard is that they do sour beers now, but that was not always the intention, that they did a batch and they can't get rid of it, and so they just decided to roll with it. Like, I mean, that happens. If a lot of, I mean, if you're going to do it, you don't want to just have it be like, oh, haha, -ha, crazy Friday, let's make a sour beer today. You have to, I mean, say, they're crazy about sanitation anyway, because one infection, and it, you ruin everything, but if now you're making sours, it's like you're purposely infecting your beer, it's going to be that much harder to find where everything is and keep it all clean. I mean, I'm yeah. known to breweries that do that where, yeah, they'll make a sour beer, and then they make a lot of infected beers after it. Yeah, I think that's what happened. They are just trying to get rid of it, and they are like, fuck it. We're just going to go with it. Anyway, yeah. that's the well, They did a good I'm job, because Jester King is, like, of the sour breweries in the country, you have uh, Cascade... Uh, Crooked Stave, and then I would say Jester King would be a big one, and then uh, Wicked Weed out in North Carolina would be the other one. Like those never, four are the big ones. I've never been to Jester King, but I've, they've got apparently like a huge property, like acres and acres of land and picnic tables, and somebody that sells pizza out. Like it's it's out kind of not yeah, in the country, but it's not in the city for sure. I, I want to say, don't they grow? I think all the fruit they use in their beer, they try to grow. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, what you're I saying, like, I think, is right. Yeah, I feel like Jester King was one of the first craft brewers on the scene in Austin that really just started making a big scene. Yeah. Well, now I know, like, I know people who have trade. If they have trade connections from here to Jester King, I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah. Absolutely love Wicked Weed. Oh, you've Wicked. had them before. It's so good. Yeah, they're I've only like two and a half hours from me. Oh, very cool. Nashville. As a vacation spot, we want to do once is hit up hit up Asheville. Definitely do Wicked Weed. 
than all, you know, all the other breweries. <laughs> there's so many breweries down there. When um, Lee and I were getting married for our beer, uh, we went to Asheville for the weekend and just went to every brewery down there. We went to Wicked Weed, and they're like a case of beer from Wicked Weed that was like 200 bucks because you're looking at $20 mm-hmm. bottles of uh, sours and stuff from there. Yeah. We ended up getting a keg of beer from Catawba. 50 bucks each? We can do it. <laughs> Let's do it. I hope we'll be going. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, you were, you're talking about like... Um, okay, so this is what brought me back uh, to those facts that we're talking about. Um, so number one, you're, you're talking about like um, infecting your beer, but um, so this is the first fact that they had on here was saying that every beer used to have some element of sourness to it. Um, from what I get on here is that because they didn't have pure yeast cultures, and mm-hmm. so at that point you would always have sourness in every beer. Yeah, so you basically just did open fermentation. So at certain steps, instead of trying to be sterile and infect and using yeast you want, you would just say, screw it, let it cool down to the open air. Whatever's around will do it. Which is part of their appeal, too, later, is just the idea is you're getting local, the local flora in the air is what's fertilizing your beer and... You know, that's why some beers will taste 100% unique because it's only the yeast in the air right in that spot is there. So, so. going with that, speaking of unique beers, um, you remember when we talked about Rogue isolating that yeast from uh, the, the brewer's guy's beard? Yeah. What? Uh, oh, yeah. So, this is what we talked about back in the Rogue Sriracha incident. Whatever like episode right four. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, they had isolated a yeast from the brewer's beard, and they made a, a beer out of it, a batch out of it. So Randall sends me this story saying that someone is trying to crowdfund a beer made from vaginas. And yeah. so I'm sure it already happens. I saw yeah. that I saw that in my email today as well. Wait, what? I thought he was baiting me. So um, it says, oh, well, it's right right here. you can make beer out of anything, beer yeast, moon dust, frankincense, myrrh. It's like, um, so why not vaginas? Let me see. I'm going to read what it has on here. Um, a Polish man named, I don't know how to say this name, you know, is promising a new beer, a beer that will evoke the quintessence of feminin- femininity. He launched an Indiegogo campaign on behalf of the company Order of Yanni to fund his brave new product. It's called Bottle Instinct, and he gets his desire, if he gets his desired $168,000, he'll, he'll be the first ever made beer from lactic acid bacteria from the vagina of a very unique woman. Mm. Yeah. What does that mean? The I unique know. woman, I don't know, that's what I said. The unique woman in question is Czech model named Alexandra Brindlova. I don't know who she is. Brindlova. Do you get to drink her yeast infection? <laughs> <laughs> What's so great about this bitch's vagina? Whoa. The kind I'm of just female saying. whose pheromones will stay with you after the meeting for the following week long. I don't know if this guy like hooked up with this chick and was just like, damn, I am whooped on her. I'm going to make a beer out of her. Oh, uh, it's making harder and harder to make. Yes, but you get her yeast infection. They put throw it in a beer. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Boom. Got it. Let's see. Let me see the status of it. So far, the Indiegogo campaign has raised 11 euros in six days. Though man is clearly prepared for some major donations, the reward for donating 10,000 euros is 60 bottles of beer made from your girlfriend's vaginal bacteria. Or why? Or why? I mean, some of us are married. I feel like that's the bad way to spread an STD. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, would that Rick would? I don't think STDs would be passed through. I mean, I, I'm just thinking now, science. No, right? I mean, it, I mean. It's a process. It would get burned out, but still, the thought of uh, yeah, yeah, gross. weird. Why not drink your beer that's funky and tastes like horse blanket? That's way yeah. better. I already have that beer. It's right here. It's called Brett Z. <laughs> Very artesian. I hope he has like a really good name for it. Like I hope it's super funny and clever. I mean, if uh, you're gonna do it. Oh yeah. Wait. If you're so do it, you gotta do it. What the hell would you call it though? You wouldn't drink know. this. I'm not the marketing mastermind. I'm just saying he better sell it. <laughs> he better sell it. Do it. That's funny. I'm gonna click on the Indiegogo campaign right here. I wanna see what's going. On. It takes I mean, me there. if you think about it, 
if, if it took off, like, you could just do this forever. You could get people of all different nationalities. You could get well, a I think celebrity. The, like, hey, you know. if, you, if you really think about it, does the recipe change every 30 days? <laughs> oh, no, in theory, it would change <laughs> not even every 30 days. It would change, like, every day or every week. Mm, I just got that. Gross. <laughs> I'm going to click on this, see what this is about. I was not thinking about it. This is supposed to be a YouTube video. I think this is the Imagine girl. a woman of your dreams, your object of desire, her charm, her sensuality, her passion. Try her taste, feel her smell, hear her voice. Now for your fantasy. <laughs> it's so weird. With magic wand, you can close it in one bottle of beer. The golden drink brewed with her lure and grace and flavored instincts, which source we have identified. We have discovered a process of transmission of her essence, of her femininity. Her instincts by isolation of lactic acid This is bacteria. a badass infographic, Vagina. though. <laughs> Our laboratory isolates and multiplies the bacteria in a safe way. I hope this guy's got a degree in science of some sort. Final bacteria in terms of its purity and safety. We use the bacteria in the production of sour ales, lambics, Flanders ales... What does it mean if it's extra sour? sour? By using uh, young okay. bacteria in the process, <laughs> and women's instincts. We have women's <laughs> instincts. Alexandra. I wonder Brandbrook. if it tastes a lot like sourdough. <laughs> no. This Who's is a girl. Will stay with you after the meeting. She's uh, wrong. She's not bad it's looking. Insanity and excitement reminding you of the best time of your youth. This insanity will overwhelm your mind. Yeah. Taste. Yeah. Need to see an ID, please. And finally, we have found a woman who possesses all the desired instincts which we wanted to frame in our bottle. We have bottled the beer. I just in can't a believe this is still going on. <laughs> <laughs> How long of a commercial? <laughs> well, it's the Indiegogo. Oh, we're gonna use your vagina and make this beer, but hot chick, hot chick, hot chick. Like they sandwich that information in the middle, but like don't think about that too much. Just think it's about like this. Probably, it's probably not even from her. You could just make that. Let me see what the actual is. It uh still where's the money? The money? The money? The money? Where are those crafting? Don't they? They should have a status of this project. Usually. You had it on the other. Are you just talking about the dollars or? Oh, it's on the right hand side. Look. Yeah, it was up there. It said like ninety five dollars. It's all all those things. It's electric pack. Oh, okay, right here. Sorry. Yeah, it was at the top. My bad. So it's so, so ninety five euros. It's got twenty four days left. Dude, we're gonna have to keep check on this in two weeks. So uh, somebody yeah, remind me about it. Fifty thousand. Yeah, they're not getting there. I like that this lined up well with the sour beers too, because that's what they're, they're making sour ales from this. So. Yeah, I and mean, thank God current events worked out. Yeah, that was uh, that's all Randall right there though. So Randall's still contributing. <laughs> it's, the, it's the spirit of Randall. He's touching us right now. He always sends, sends me random shit like that. That's funny. He would. Uh, Dude, I've got one of my neighbors viewing in. He just sent me a text. He said, "Did you get a drink or yeast infection?" Ha ha ha. I was reading that uh, from the those facts from. Box brew kits, and then up at the top. Oh, let me do this screen share so you guys can see it. But it says for 69 bucks, I can make a gallon of beer right here. I don't know. You guys are kind of like well, quasi home brewers. What is your status, Jamie? Are you still doing it on the reg, making home brews? Man, I haven't brewed since I moved into the new place. Um, I've been looking at doing a whiskey stout though. That's gonna be my next thing that I brew. I wanted to brew when it was cold because it takes a lot. It's a lot less cooling time. Whiskey stout, man. That's that's something there. I'm not I've sure got, I've ever seen whiskey stout. I've got a really good bottle of uh, whiskey, and I just need to start looking at and making a good. Stout. Good job, man. What kind of whiskey? But uh. I haven't, I haven't brewed in a while. It's shit. It's probably been six to eight months, unfortunately. What kind of whiskey do you have? Um, it's uh, it's from Lead Slingers whiskey. It kind of tastes like Jim Beam, but um, it's pretty good. Yeah. I was gonna use it. I've got all kinds. I've got Crown. Um, 
I've got some moonshine, but I'm not going to put that in a beer. Um, Rick, you haven't brewed in a while, while, right? Two years, yeah. But I plan on doing a, a, just some pale ales this summer. You've got a house now, so you can like set up a whole thing outside now. Well, I, but I mean, the main thing is temp controlled. You know, you want to have it at a decent temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got all that land now, bro. Uh, yeah, but it's Florida. It's hot outside, dude. Build a whole other house in the backyard, and then uh, that'll just be good. <laughs> one day. Ground. That's how Ballast Point. See how I said Ballast Point? That's how Ballast Point started, man. He could be a billionaire in a couple years. Yeah, I doubt that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So according to you guys, is this a good kit right here for sixty nine bucks? The taster one gallon beer making kit right here? Um I mean that looks like they included a lot of extra stuff you don't need. Like the pencil and the thermometer? And the whole box, the box? thing. What's the point of all that shit? And a little funnel well, like uh-huh. you, you just go to a homebrew store, you can buy a one gallon like sample kit and then like the few other things you need really easily. But Rick, that doesn't look as cool on Instagram. Yeah, this yeah. looks crazy fancy, though, man. I mean, look at that. I think it's got the little section right here. But, but you know, based on what it looks like here, you know, on the photos, what it's showing what comes with it, it doesn't seem like it has everything you need to brew. Like, nearly at all, even for a one-gallon kit. Yeah, you're going to need, like, a, a one-gallon, like, a one- or yeah. two-gallon kettle and everything else. Yeah, generally speaking, and two kettles makes it way easier. Yeah. Yo, man. Hey, how are your beers tasting? Have they, because uh, we slowly warmed up a little bit. I, w- I went to my second. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost done with mine. I wish I had a second beer. I need to crack another one. Okay, uh, <laughs> Hey, uh, uh, what's that second beer you got going? So it's called Serenata Naturna from Crooked Stave as well. I didn't. I it's I don't see it on Beer Advocate. I see the blueberry version, but not this one. This one just dropped. It's a mixed fermentation Belgian style golden ale. Um, surprisingly, at 12%. I did not realize how strong it was until I opened it. <laughs> I think this is the first time it was brewed, so it's it's good. It's definitely strong though, but you I mean it's not as um, it just says mixed fermentation, so I don't know what yeast strains. They didn't say. I will say as this one's warming up, the sourness isn't as pungent, or that's the, the smell isn't as pungent, so it doesn't smell as bad as stale bread or whatever, but it's becoming more bearable, but I don't know if that's just because it's 0.1% and it, that's why I'm liking it more. I don't know. Which one good. was that again? I'm sorry. Brett C? Go, Brett C. Adventure Time? Oh, you're still on that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Miguel. Man. Step your shit up. Hey, man, I'm on a budget and this was 10 bucks. <laughs> 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 this is a good sour beer. Um, I don't... Oh, well, you had two, didn't you, Jamie? Or you just uh, had the just, one? Well, before okay. we started, I started drinking a uh, pineapple sculpin. And then I, I drank that Grand Cru. I'm about to go get another one. Hey, how was that pineapple sculpin? Yeah? It's really good, dude. It, um, I think it's better than the grapefruit. Oh, That's yeah? That's what everyone's saying, but I, I, I find that hard to believe. I want to try it so bad. Do you think I can't it's find it. sweet, though? Because, like, pineapple is so sweet in comparison Both? to grapefruit. So, are you kind of cut out a little bit, Jamie? Yeah. Say that again. I figured you would probably find a lot of grapefruit sour since it's more of a sour fruit, anyways. Hmm. Yeah, I found I saw some pineapple sours, but I don't know if the grapefruit sour is is as abundant. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I'm trying to think like which one is grapefruit sour that more sour than a pineapple? Yeah, pineapple. Uh, well, pineapple is sour acidically, like obviously. Because pineapple juice, well, I mean, you can eat through your tongue after long enough time. But uh, grapefruit, I don't know. Grapefruit's more of that tart sour, like yeah, sour okay. grapefruit. But pineapple, yes, it de- pineapple's definitely sweeter. Tart. I want oh. to try. It. I almost bought it the other day for my husband, but I was like, oh man, such a commitment if you don't like it, because it's you know again. Yeah, weird. it's so expensive when you can just get it on tap for way cheaper, like. Like, you know, any average IPA would be five bucks at a bar and ten bucks a six pack. Yeah. Sculpin is like six bucks for a pint at a bar, but it's like eighteen bucks a six pack. So like that's just one of those beers I just get when I I'm out. It's a good beer, but 
can uh, yeah, close I'd, I'd like room. to try it just on tap without committing to six. I wish it was in like a bomber or something. Um, as we near the end of the episode, we can uh, finish up on on these. This is from that same page that I was reading off earlier, and uh, this is a few sour beers to try, and it has Duck Duck Goose, The Lost Abbey. <laughs> That's My a, buddy's got one, and it's like one of his prized possessions. Yeah, oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, uh, Supplication Russian River Brewing Company. I had that well, two years ago. My the trip when I got engaged, I had I bought one of those, and it was probably the best sour I've ever had. Oh, that's the bottle right there next to it. The yeah. supplication. Does it look like that? Yeah. Yep. yep. I've got a. It's like I saved the bottle and everything. I got that and what another one of their sours, and they were both phenomenal. What is this thing? Is this a rake or something? What is this? <clears throat> uh, I don't know. They a lot of the artwork is like old like farmers' tools. Industrial, yeah, tools. So. But the, uh, the thing that bugs me, all the uh. On the all their every single label, the all the uh, artwork is in Comic Sans. <laughs> oh, it bugs the shit out of me. I hate that. Like, ironically, so or just they like, I think it, uh, it's ironically they okay. they could explode to a, a huge brewery if they wanted, but they just love being like the small hipster place that everybody loves. That's where Pliny the Elder is from. Is Russian River. I know they're doing. That's I... a huge. That's a big double IPA. That's just. The rage. Let me read through. Oh, Serenity Wiki, by Wicked Weed is on here. I know y'all mentioned that one earlier. Mm -hmm. um, La Roja, Jolly Pumpkin Ales. I don't know how to say this one. Prolegomena, Prolegomena from Hill Farmstead Brewery. Awesome. Out, out of Tot, the brewery. Um, three other ones. The other three on here. Oh, Jester King Brewery. Who mentioned that earlier? I think it was you, Jamie, from Jester King or one of y'all. Um, Atrial Root Site. Rubesite, atrial rubies, at, um, rubesite. I actually had that not so long ago, and it was phenomenal. That was one my buddy traded for. It's one of the few beers I'd rate five out of five. Okay, nice. I didn't realize you had a ranking system of of just five stars. Um, well, that's what Untapped is on the phone, because I I use Untapped, so I always do it out of five now. What's your Untapped name, man? Dude, we're friends on Untapped. <laughs> For the podcast, yo. <laughs> oh. All right. I'm oh, sorry. I thought I was insulted for a minute. Um, Maybe he doesn't want to be friends with all our 57 listeners. Uh, Piro Goeth, P I R O G O 3 T H. There you go, America. There are a few people that are inquired on there. Uh, yeah, mine is Empty Rent at Empty Rent. You can find me on there. I don't. Jamie, are you on Untapped? Yeah, I'm on Untapped. It's uh, I gotta, I gotta add you, bro. Do what? I gotta add you on there. What what's your screen name? J Knight eight six four. Uh, Knight is K N I G H T. Day and night or day night? No K. Oh K Knight. My bad. Yeah. I see what you're saying. My bad. And then um, Teresa, I don't know. Are you on on top? I don't know if you are. Um, I signed up once. <laughs> I was actually just checking the app. I, I do have a, a screen name. A screen name is that what they call it? I don't even know. I sound like 80. Jesus. Home page. <laughs> the beer's kicking in. Um, all right. Hopefully <laughs> we'll uh, for a better evening. Turn off this screen share. <laughs> um, yeah. So, hey, this was a, a good little segment. Let's go ahead and finish up. As always... Hey, Jamie, thanks for uh, joining us, man. Well, we'll see. we got to pick up. Hey, what are we thinking about for our next category? Might as well discuss this at the end here. Week, man. We cover... What's like a good spring seasonal? Spring. You know what? Before we go to that, I will say last week we covered chili beers. I had the Alaskan jalapeno uh, it, from Alaskan Brewing. It had jalapeno. It was, a, it was all right. The Serrano, the Serrano pepper one that I had from Green Flash was a lot better. Um, but I will say the technique there, I mean, you have the delicacy of a perfectly balanced beer, and then you're throwing spices in it, and then we kind of hit, so that was super spicy, and then we go to super sour, which is on the other end of the, I think, the spectrum there, and that's what we're discussing this week, so. I mean, it, it comes down to the brewer's technique and how they are balancing out all of this, because you can't just throw stuff together, just make it sour. I mean, I think anybody can make a sour beer, but only a very selective few can make a good sour beer. I think that's right. That's yeah. Right. No, oh, yeah. I mean, like, I had that Shiner birthday cake beer last year, and it was a chocolate stout, and I'm like, great. I love stouts. I love chocolate stouts. It was 
it tasted like a dirty old beer that had thrown some chocolate powder and it was disgusting. It was done so horribly. Sorry, Shiner. Okay, so damn it, Shiner. <laughs> season, let me see, two weeks. That puts us in uh, April like seventh week. I don't know. Okay, so okay, I've got an idea. So we've done oh, chili, April. we've done sour, we've let's 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 do a back to basics. Let's do uh let's do red ales. Red ales. It's My no, man. Seriously, seriously, red ales. No muss, no fuss. Just nice. Dude, that's our title right there. Mm-hmm. It'd be like red one oh five. Red yeah. ales. No muss, no fuss. No well, fuss. No which, so it takes me back. I think it was College Humor did an article once, and it said like the ten beers you're gonna find at a beer bar, <laughs> and or I, like the the newest craft beer bar. And I mean, I really can't remember all the details, but I remember the punchline. So it's going through. They probably, you know, they, they started with an IPA, and they gave a really sarcastic exam- reason why it's on there. And as they went through, they kept going back to, like, oh, double IPA, triple IPA, quadruple IPA, like, just making fun of the hop wars, barrel-aged stuff. Like, they were just making fun of the craft beer movement. And then the last beer on the list was a red ale, because, you know, like, but you won't ever, it, you know, this beer is amazing, you know, perfectly crafted, excellent version of the style, but you won't drink it because it's not flashy enough. Fuck you. Like, that was... <laughs> the whole point of it was that. Because, I mean, that's so true. I mean, I've been places where, I mean, there are a really good red ale is a good beer. But it's just not a flashy beer. It's just a very mellow, subtle, nice, simple beer. doesn't do anything fancy, but it does it right. I like it, man. So All let's right. do it. April 13th, that's when we're looking to reconvene. Um, hey, thank you to your buddy Jamie for... Uh, or your buddy Jamie for joining or watching us. Also... Uh, what's his name? Jacob from Hoto, I mean Hutto, Hutto, Texas. My bad. Um, thanks for listening, man. Hopefully you can send in your favorite sour beer, and I'll post it up somewhere. Uh, oh man! <laughs> uh, any last words, guys? Uh, Teresa, what do we got from you? Come on, on the spot. We do this every. Hey, I'm getting better. Everyone always have a glass ready when you pour your beer so you don't lose half of it on the counter to top off your bad night. Nice. That's that's legitimate. Yes. It's a, it's a good idea. Yeah, I liked it. Um, Rick, any last words you want to leave us with about sours? Um, just, you know, when if you decide to get into sours, it's real easy to go, oh, my God, this is so delicious, and you start going to town on them. Um, pace yourself. Because your gut flora will not be prepared for it. <laughs> Man, that's a good point because not a lot of people think about the bacteria involved with these, especially with these sour beers. I didn't think it either. Well, it's not so much the Brett beers. It's more of the lacto and pediococcus, like the lactic acid, making it lower pH. I, I, like, it will wreck you. Because the, fir- the first time I had one, I was like, oh, my God, this is tart and sour. I love it. I drank, like, five or six glasses at the bar. I I was hurting the next day, like... It was like lava. I have a I have a stupid question, but I don't understand science. So muscle soreness is supposed to be due to lactic acid acid buildup. I mean, would that have any effect on like me being extra sore if I introduced more? No, no. I th- the whole thing with that is it's just lactic acid built up in your muscles, and it's it's yeah. too built up, so your body can't. You know, you feel the burn of it actually burning you, but then. The burn goes away as your body gets rid of it just naturally like it would. It's just you're pushing it too far. So, yeah, no, this is staying in your stomach. It's not going to your muscles. Unless you, okay. want, to shoot, unless you want to shoot it up. No. No. <laughs> Requiem for a Dream style, just, you know, sour beers. Man, I need to watch that movie already. That's the second reference this week. Don't. Yeah. It, well, do it. It's the best movie you'll only ever watch once. Um, <laughs> it's the best movie. Wait, it's supposed to be like one of the best movies of our like. My it's time? an amazing movie, but it is just the heaviest, most intense movie you can watch. Like, I know right now, like when I have kids, don't send them to dare class. Don't have the drug talk <laughs> with them. You sit them down and have them watch Requiem for a Dream, and they will never touch anything. <laughs> that movie is so. I mean, but it's so realistic. It's it just. Oof. But you said heavy, man. Uh, this morning at seven thirty this morning. Our boss decides to have a safety meeting, and um, we go in there, and uh, you know, seven thirty in the morning, we're like half awake, and the guy's talking about like getting his like fingers chopped. It, it was a video they played for us, and it was like the videos, the fingers getting chopped off, and he's just like, 
damn, this is heavy for 7.30 in the morning. It's not even 8, man. <laughs> 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 so the whole day we're just thinking about that video. Um, <laughs> Jamie, any last words for our sours? Rants 103 sours. Sours. Stay away sours. from Anheuser Bush. Drink something good. Nice. That's good. Yeah, yeah I, I, got a, I got a joke. Um, where do monkeys go to grab a beer? <laughs> where? The the monkey bars. Boom! Oh, oh, oh. Uh, like that, right? Nice. All right, guys. Hilarious. Time. We'll see you in two weeks with. Uh, oh, red L's. No muss, no fuss. Cuss. Cuss. Trust. Here we go. We got it. <laughs>